Good evening, friends. Stephen Burnett with Israeli News Live. Uh, listen, there's some things that I've been sharing over on Patreon. I uh, don't know if I've actually discussed this particular issue here about the Canary Islands, but uh, this is mostly intel reports. I don't very frequently share this type of information here on Israeli News Live, but as the situation gets a little bit more intense, I think it might not be a bad idea for me to kind of get some of this information out to you. Uh, let me start with this Canary Island issue, and then we're going to go into Puerto Rico. We're going to be going into Greenland, China, the different calamities we're facing there, some things that I've shared on Patreon uh, that I think you should know. Uh, and by the way, if you happen to be, I just saw there in the side here, John uh, John B. Wells, he is live right now. I'm going to jump back over there a little bit later and catch John on his broadcast here. There, he's up to 11 o'clock, a little over 1,046 people watching. Uh, jump in the chat room there and, and chat with some of the friends there that John has. Uh, listen, John puts together always an awesome program. Why don't you guys come over there and join me tonight? Let, let's see if we can't just swamp John with a couple of thousand extra people live in there. Uh, uh, just, I really appreciate John. He's really a great guy there. We've been friends for many, many years. And uh, in fact, we were texting here the other day and we keep miss missing each other's texts there. So let's see, let's, let me try to get you all over there and let, let's have some fun there with John. Uh, let's get right into the situation here that I wanted to talk to you about though. Uh, where am I at here? Right here. Uh, a friend of mine from FEMA sent me this video, Seismic Swarm Under La Cumbra Volcano, La Palma Canary Islands. Now notice the activity is under the volcano, and I really want to bring this out. I think I've already shared this on our Patreon channel. I almost positive I did just recently there. There is a, uh, this is on Magnetic Reverse News. I need to subscribe to this guy. He really put out a very good video on this. Uh, the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because uh, when one of the questions that I was asked in, my, in our meetings that we had last week was um, about the lava that's moving under New York. And I was told that the lava moving under New York, you know, they're very much aware of it, but that wasn't a big issue. That lava, by the way, now let me just kind of jump over here to the U.S. map here, uh, goes all the way from New York all the way down there to the Canary Islands, which is right in there, uh, that lava belt goes that far. And so we were discussing this issue, and they said that the lava that's coming under, that's moving underneath New York is not nearly as much of a concern as the situation with Canary Islands, and mainly because I was told that there has been chatter that Russia and China working together we're going to set off a device that would activate the volcano under the Canary Islands. That this was a threat now, it wasn't a guarantee, but a threat that they know that existed. And if they could cause that collapse in the Canary Islands, it would create a tsunami that would pretty much obliterate New York in the first place. I mean, that's the honest to God's truth. And uh, I, like I said, I think I've already shared that over on Patreon. Uh, so our viewers there, I'd have to go back and look, look and see if I actually, if I gave that information out or not. I did talk about Puerto Rico. I did talk about China. I did talk about Greenland. We're going to get into that tonight. But then a uh, good friend of mine, in fact, the good friend already knew this, that works with FEMA, about that because they had asked me to ask the question about New York. And so I'd, I'd give them the update, I, I guess, Friday or Saturday or something like that. So they knew that I, I said that. So then they send me that video of the seismic activity that is going on specifically, as I was told, the volcano. Let's listen into a little bit of this guy's uh, video footage here. On Good the evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, right. Magnetic Reversal, the okay. rest of the Atlantic coast. And this is a very dangerous volcano. And we're about to get to the paper that describes the potential collapse and tsunami at La Palma, Canary Islands. Now, La Palma is this potential collapse and tsunami, but every island, this island to the south frontera, has three potential tsunami directions. Tenerife has one, two, at least three. Gran Canaria has two directions, and so on and so forth. So this is a very threatening place seismologically. Now, if, we're, if we come we're over here and we look at activity. the amount of seismic activity going on in just the last 24 hours, this I'm having some connectivity issues, so this is going to 
take a while to blow up. There we are. Unbelievable. And it may be impossible. Right? To see. Unbelievable. But what I want to bring your attention to is the number of quakes. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of quakes swarming beneath this deadly region on the boat, on the island. This is the region that is purported to be the one that if it slumps into the ocean, well, there will be 40 million dead within eight hours. Can you believe that? And that is, is not a joke. Now he's that is show the reality the of what's happening here. There are many good documentaries that. on La Palma and the possibility of this. It, in fact, did happen. I think right Islands. here. I showed you the position. And we're going to discuss the La Palma mega tsunami. mega tsunami scenario. And there it is. So in an instant, within hours, the entire Atlantic is someday again, like it did a half a million years ago, a large piece of Palma will break away, just like that visualization there. And here's the slump there. And that's going to cause a massive tsunami. In minutes, as much as 500 cubic kilometers of rock will crumble into the sea and stir waves hundreds of meters high. Now, during the simulation, the waves got as high as 400 meters. That's crazy. So while minutes. you're watching this simulation, anything from this scenario, bigger or smaller, can happen. But this is a relatively large land. You know, you know listen, friends, even if it was a 300-foot tidal wave or a 100-foot tidal wave, that would be devastating to the coastline. 200-foot. I mean, 200-foot is like a 20-story building coming, washing on shore. You know, even the tidal waves that have killed so many down, like uh, I think around Malaysia and and Japan, places like that, they're only like 30, 40, maybe 60 foot. Nothing, nothing compared to what something like that would be. All right. So here's the thing that I wanted to share with you guys because I was really concerned about it. And uh, like I said, I shared it over on Patreon. I, I got to where I don't share a lot of this. Oh, oh, by the way, speaking of seismic activity, before we go to that, let me let me just show this here. You know, I keep showing how we're just volcan or excuse me, earthquakes are just on the rise like crazy. Look at the United States. Look down here in California and stuff. Look at all these quakes. 3.0, uh, San Fernando, California. Again, San Fernando, California. Another one in uh, San Fernando, California. All right, now, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, Mila Petit, La Milpitas, California. Uh, that one is near uh, Idria, California. Then we have Fernando, California. Then Creek, California. And then we have this one over here in uh, Dar Din Dinella, California. And then up in Alaska, we got quite a few more up in here again. Uh, uh, Yucatan, uh, Alaska. Glen Allen, Alaska, two of them up right up in here. Uh, Harding Birch Lakes, Alaska. And there's another one right up underneath there. 4.9 Birch Lakes again. And then way up here in the north part of Alaska, uh, Kaktavik, uh, Alaska. So just a lot, a lot of quakes there happening along the west coast there. And even down into here to Puerto Rico. Looks like Puerto Rico. Maybe, maybe not Puerto Rico. Let's just see. Oh, you know, it actually looks like it is Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico is fixing to get hammered, friends. Yeah, Puerto Rico. Look at all the quakes going on down there in Puerto Rico. A lot of aftershocks, so you know what you're really dealing with. 2.7, uh, 3.5. I guess 3.5 was probably the main one today. And then all these little aftershocks popping up everywhere. 3.3, another one right in there and behind there. Catch that 3.2. One over there the north side of Puerto Rico, 3.2 as well. So a lot of seismic activity is going on. And listen, I am not the expert on earthquakes, nothing like that. I, I promise you, I definitely am not the guy on that. Watch Italy, though. There's going to be major earthquake there that's going to hit there before too long, and it's going to have a massive impact on uh, Italy. So definitely want to be keeping your eyes over there on that. 4.5 down there in Greece, 4.1 up in uh, 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 Coplic, Albania, uh, so, but anyway, anyway, so let's get to what I wanted to share with you there. We go over here to the, to the, uh, to the map here. I, there's been a lot of talk. I know that Mike from around the world been saying a lot on, on Paul's program there about um, October and uh, meteorites 
the shower or something of that effect coming in. And I have been telling you guys about November. In November, we're going to have the subsuduction zone get hit by a, and again, let me clarify this before I say that. Subsuduction zone is a target place, which would be right in this area here for a quarter of a mile wide asteroid that is coming in. They're not making it public as they never do because we have such advanced technology in breaking asteroids up uh, or diverting them in another direction that we're, we're very successful with that. Uh, that's thanks to our advanced space program that is never known to the general public. Uh, but we have a lot of technology. We have a lot of capabilities. But this one particular rock, the density has been giving us a, a really hard time. The Chinese got involved with it uh, to try to help break this thing up. They've been unsuccessful as well. Uh, we're trying to divert it. Uh, still have been unsuccessful with that. Uh, you know, and of course, when, when they're traveling, they're traveling with more than one. See, it, it's, it's a, like a surgical procedure as well. So you have to be careful. Finally, at one point, the, the Chinese said, let's just put a nuke on the thing and bust this flipping rock up. Well, extraterrestrials, fallen angels, whatever you want to call them, uh, are very much against that. Uh, they have a lot of weight because of the technology that they have given to us. So therefore, uh, nobody is willing to do anything about it. I have been told, though, that you never know, though, the Chinese might just go on a rogue mission and just nuke this thing anyway. Uh, and it not be a problem and not hit the subsuduction zone, or we may end up having just a small piece hit and not be nearly as devastating. So always keep that in mind. We have a lot of uh, things that are disposal to do it. Uh, Japan has gotten involved with this as well. Uh, Japan is also working to help us to try to break those up. But Japan, Russia, China, the United States are all working together right now because we are dealing with uh, debris coming in in October, and we're not talking about anything huge, no no extinction level events, things like that. Most of these are going to be very small rocks, but we do have some the size of washing machines, and the size of a washing machine uh, meteorite striking can be pretty doggone devastating in a, in a localized area. Uh, but some of the things that have been said to me, though, about Puerto Rico has kind of given me the uh, idea that the one that's going to hit in the area of Puerto Rico in October, unless they're able to do something about it, is a little bit bigger than a washing machine. The reason why I say that is because I've been told what's going to happen in Puerto Rico is going to affect northern South America. All right, so Northern South America is going to be affected by whatever happens around Puerto Rico. So you're talking about Venezuela. You're talking about uh, uh, all these countries right along the coastline there. Uh, Guyana, I've been told uh, all these countries here just south of Puerto Rico are going to be affected. Dominican Republic will be affected. And I've been told as well that unless they can do something about, because a large number of small rocks coming in that's affecting this region, even southern Florida, the tip, and I was only told just the tip, could potentially be affected. Uh, so when we say potentially, I'm kind of figuring they're anticipating some sort of small tidal wave as a result of this. Uh, so we might end up seeing a 20 foot type and, and that's just Steve. That's not sources telling me this, but I'm just thinking maybe 20 foot, 30 foot types tied away could uh, result uh, as a result of this uh, strike here. But the big issue that I'm told when it comes to Puerto Rico is not so much a tidal wave, but they said it's so unstable seismology, uh, seismology wise in this region here, it wouldn't take much if the right asteroid hits in those areas there that could cause a massive earthquake. Now that could cause a tidal wave in itself. All right, so just keep that in mind. Now the other part that I was told, we got two more areas. And, and the other thing that has been said, if you look at the equator, and you follow the equator, which you get down in that area there, you're on the equator zone there. This is the, the Achilles heel, the, the Achilles heel of disaster when you're dealing with meteorites, okay? So a lot of these do hit the oceans uh, you, around those areas. Uh, and that's why we don't see a whole lot of filming of these things that are coming in. They're hitting the oceans. 
but that is a target zone there. The other target zone is China this time around. China, of course, they're a huge country. Uh, they're not necessarily on the equator, only southern parts of China, but some of the areas that, from what I've been told, are a target in that region there of China, that uh, they're concerned about uh, these rocks, again, creating earthquakes that may end up destroying their dams. China's infrastructure, when they built it, they did it very rapidly. So I was told the quality of the building of the dams was nowhere near that of the quality of what we have in the United States. And so they're very concerned that these meteorites that are going to be hitting China, uh, because meteorites do cause earthquakes and they could very well destabilize uh, certain regions. And if they were to bust up a dam or something like that, it's going to have devastating effects on the people downstream. Uh, then I was told one other thing. All right, let's move up here to the North Pole region, Greenland. I've shared this over on Patreon before that there is coming, there is anticipation of a release of a new type of virus that is buried under the permafrost. Scientists that have been doing unearthing there, uh, and they're not making that public either, uh, but it is very much believed by some of the people that I know that there is they have discovered a new form of viruses in bodies that were unearthed in the permafrost. Uh, what was really interesting, though, is I was told that every time you hear about global warming, global warming really was based on the idea that when all this debris started coming in in the 2020s, uh, that it would cause a rapid meltdown of those glaciers, which would undo the permafrost, which would unleash all types of of possible viruses and everything else that could be buried in there. Uh, and, and of course, you know, you never know. That could just be the narrative being played out uh, so that people think that's what it is when they actually release it on us. And I have been told a lot of what's going to happen will be man-made. Keep that in mind. This is not just all natural disaster, but man-made or even made in Alienville. Maybe you could say something like that. Uh, you know, the extraterrestrials are also behind even the rocks that are coming in. Uh, in fact, they were, I asked the question in the meeting I was in recently, I said, why is not anyone, you know, these, these, these extraterrestrials, these fallen angels as they are, uh, seem to be so uh, interested in giving us technology, and they have technology, then why don't they break up some of these rocks for us? They can do it. Sure they could. Well, I was told that that question was asked in the Joint Chiefs of uh, Staff meeting recently, and the, the answer was it, they were approached about this, and they said it's not time yet. Well, another one of the uh, generals there uh, made the comment back, well, we see then where they stand. Hmm, they're not really interested in helping us. So I was told, yeah, the extraterrestrials or the fallen angels are waiting for us to get to our knees because they want to bring their own Messiah figure and be the savior of the day. And that's not going to happen around 2026. So they want this calamity to strike the earth. This is the cold hard facts, friends. And uh, listen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, I, I really do. And uh, and like I said, most times this type of information I share only over on Patreon because the viewers there, they, they have a little bit more of appreciation. You get a lot of naysayers here. And I, I really hate that, but it, it is true. You just get a lot of naysayers. But I wanted to be able to update this for you, let you know what's going on. Uh, you know, so, well, I don't know what to say. Uh, listen, oh, by the way, too, I just got a report in from a good friend of mine, uh, uh, John Moore. He's got some sources that are telling him power grid is going down. There's some uh, two different sources. Uh, they got friends in the military there that are deploying to D.C., and they're telling uh, their families, stock up on food and water. Power grid is going to be going down. Uh, before too long, and we're going to be without power for a while. I've been telling you guys this for months. Get ready. Make sure you're stocked up on food and water. We have got a very, very rough winter coming. Some not so pleasant things are going to be happening, friends. Very, very bad situation. Uh, if you haven't got your EMP shield, get your EMP shield. Use the code INL50. All right, I'll just quickly walk you through. I hadn't done it for a while there. I don't even know if the guys over at EMP Show are still doing their sell. If they're doing their sell, uh, it'd be great. But if not, 
Yeah, they're still doing the sale as well, all right? Notice on their sale there that they have there. If you buy one, you get $20 off. You get two or three or more, you get $30. Four or seven more, $40 off. I mean, these things get expensive. I don't know how anybody could afford something like that. But, but you know, some people do. They, they, they want it for their house, their car. They want it for their generator. That's three right there. That'd be $30 off each one of those. Plus, when you do that, you get an automatic $50 off by using the code INL50. We don't have anything in the in the box there, so let me uh, just quickly, let's just go to something here. Oh, they also have them for the radio protection, so we'll just click on one like we're going to buy a radio, right? $309. Well, you get $20 off anyway, right, if you were to get that. So now let's go to the cart. They've already added your discount for the sale, $20 off. They notch down to $289. let us do that INL50 uh, code. We're going to apply that coupon there. And that's going to knock down that, that item there to what, $239 instead of $200 or $309. So, yeah, so $239. And if you were buying a, little, a few more, you might get another $10 off of something like that. So just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Uh, don't forget, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I'll put the link in there for you. We're always uploading very interesting information over there for the friends that listen there. Uh, if it's critical and if it's biblical, I'm going to make sure you see it here no matter what. All right. Uh, so uh, but there's just a lot of interesting insights that I share over there. I recently did a CIA report that just came out uh, about fracking and what type of demonic entities that they have been tracking that are coming out of the fracking ports out west. Uh, you might find that interesting. Also, a very strange creature that has been killing manatees and even human remains down in Boca Raton, Florida. Just posted a video like that on Patreon. Uh, so I think you might find some of those things interesting. Anyway, hey, listen, let's don't forget. Let's go over here and let's go see John. They got 995 people right now uh, viewing there. I'm going there just as soon as I get this video uploaded for you guys. I'm going to go over there and hang out with John's crew there uh, and see what John's talking about tonight. Uh, I think it'll be a blessing for you. And, uh, and, you know, hey, subscribe to John's channel. I don't even know how many, how many, how many subscribers does John have here? Let's see. He has 133,000 subscribers. Quite a few subscribers there. Caravan to Midnight, known John for years. Good friend. Uh, I really appreciate John tremendously. So let's go down. Let's go over there. And let's see if we can get him up to two or 3,000 live. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. God bless you and thank you for listening.